metaphor unleashed on an unsuspecting world, the word. Word of 1993, we rap with Ice Cube, go pig racing with Zsa Zsa Gabor, and meet the woman who was courted by the king after his death. There's tough talk with Aussie hard man Russell Crowe, and music from Sister Sledge and Sunscream. The Word. Oh, it's all spontaneous stuff, isn't it? Thank you and shut your gob. Stop. No, marvellous. Welcome to the first word of 1993. A collective resolution this year, no more cock-ups. Isn't that right, No Amanda? more cock-ups, Quentin, but I can say what we have got on tonight are six pigs, a horse and a woman that's been married nine times. But first of all, we've had bucket loads of requests for some 70s soul, and as it happens, Sister Sledge are re-releasing this track on Monday, so take it away with We Are Family. <laughs>
the sledge. And I think I've still got the original uh, 12 inch that knocking around. That's out on Monday. We are family. And uh, our first guest on tonight's show has got loads and loads of family, if you count all the in laws, because she has been married eight times. Hollywood's Hungarian princess, internationally known film star, Miss Zaza Gabor. <laughs> Wasn't too wild or anything. No. Come, come over here. No, no, no. no. I just said I'm not going to be in this mad house. Sure, I'm not bringing a horse in. Delighted to meet you. I spent two thousand bucks on you, two thousand pounds on you guys. The turbo lasso. <laughs> Ride the horse with this many people. I'm not taking the chance. And with that, and I thought you were going to get a job at Butlins with that yeah, red coat. Yeah, but I fall down off a horse in England already once. <laughs> in Kent, yeah, I was playing polo and I was flying off the horse. Not going to do that here. <laughs> no. Now, you've just been uh, married for, well, the eighth time, but the ninth time, some Not people just, say. I'm married eight times for six years already. Uh -huh. The last marriage was one day. The marriage before that was three months. Then six months. I don't stay too long with the guys. <laughs> <laughs> but this time it's uh, Prince Fred Frederick van Anhalt. He's a wonderful husband. Yeah. Is he the man of your dreams now? Definitely. I wouldn't stay with him. Are you crazy? I don't stay with him if I don't love him. <laughs> Who needs you guys otherwise? Now, you, you've, uh, you've got a book out at the moment so it's called... Uh, Speak one... in English because I don't know some words. You, <laughs> <say>. you, you <laughs> have. Oh, he's such a creep. Listen, <laughs> you, you've, you've got a, I told you. you. You have a book out called uh, One Lifetime Is Not Enough, but you've also had books out in called that, uh, how, that... how to Catch a Man. And How to Keep a how Man, to How keep to Get her. Rid of a Man. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, but your own daughter isn't even married yet. No, she's not. She doesn't dare to marry because I married so often she says, but if she doesn't. Well, she thinks if she does, it'll be a start of a ten. I don't understand the word you say. <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> what did you say? What did this you is, say? This is uh, very cruel, this. Darling, I'm not cruel, but, but you're just speaking a very funny English. It happens every week. It happens every week. Are, are you concerned about your daughter not being married? No, because she lives in sin with a very cute guy, but I would like you for her. her. <laughs> they would make beautiful babies. They would like understand each other. <laughs> they sh in bed, every woman understands a man. And what else do you need? Mm. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> marriage, you sound worse than my mother now, talking about marriage. Now, uh, you, you've, you've actually had a lot of publicity, and a lot of people actually about say that... About the policeman, that, because I mm. hit him. But yeah, you any spent time in prison, didn't you? Three days, it was horrible. There was two hookers next to me in another cell. And I begged <laughs> the lady to put me with the hookers. I can learn something. I know nothing about sex. I was always married. <laughs> but... <laughs> But they didn't put me with the hookers, damn it. Mm. And then I, I worked also two months for, uh, you know, for the retarded children, for the homeless. Actually, the jail was horrible. I finished my books in jail. I never have time otherwise. Three days and three nights, they didn't give me any food, the son of a beast. I had to pay $85 a night to have the privilege to be in jail. <laughs> Oh. Saved the taxpayer all that money, though, didn't it? I don't now, think... you said that uh, you don't have sex, you've been married. But I, I don't heard... know. I don't say I don't have. I say I know nothing about sex because I <laughs> always have been married. Don't, don't you reckon that guy's know anything about sex, then? What does he say? Don't you... <laughs> he said, do you, know that, do you think that men don't know anything about sex? Oh, I, no. The men I know, they all know about uh, sex. I know nothing about sex. Mm. I mean, I don't know all the tricks that I read about. Madonna he, knows all the You answers. actually went to bed with Sean Connery and also Richard Burton. Don't talk about my husband. This is a green room. He's going to shoot me. <laughs> well, there are men that you didn't go to bed with. Didn't you turn down Elvis? Yes. Yeah? Oh, Elvis looked gorgeous. I worked in... in so why did you turn him down? He was in Las Vegas. I worked... There was no time. We both worked oh, in right. So you busy to shag Elvis? <laughs> what did you say? Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I will tell you like Elvis, that. Elvis was gorgeous. Yes, no, Mark, Mark's given up sex you for religious reasons. You know that today Elvis, the Elvis stamp sold for 500 million Elvis stamps sold in one day today. The Americans still mentally sleep with Elvis. Elvis what sold? Elvis stamps, the stamps. Oh, stamps, oh, sorry. Elvis, Elvis was not sold. 
Listen, listen, we're going to have a bit more of Elvis uh, later in the show. If you uh, speak a little slow, <laughs> I might understand you. <laughs> but listen, I, we're going to have a little bit more about Elvis in a few minutes, uh, right, uh, Zsa Zsa. I start him, I start him. In a few minutes, Zsa Zsa. I am starting to worry about myself, I understand you. Zsa in a few minutes, we'll have that, all right? <laughs> sure. I'll tell you what, what did you get for Christmas? That's what I want to know. Listen, uh, Christmas time uh, is quite sad, particularly for the homeless, and uh, we here at The Word, especially Danny, is now trying to do something for a little uh, homeless child at Christmas. Uh, Danny. Hi there. Something a little different on The Word tonight. A genuine appeal on behalf of somebody who's just become homeless and lost everything. This is Trotter, a Peruvian pygmy pig, and we hope tonight our viewers of the world are going to help us find him a new home to live in. Back to the studio. There you go. Now. There was homeless. A pig was homeless. There were there was a little homeless pig there, and uh, well, I, th I think yeah, we're, we've, a, actually, we've actually we've actually we've actually little pig. Put him in. We've got a little present for you here. I, I can't take to America pig though. Oh, that, that's the reason we've not got a table. Give him to me. That is a, that is a sink pig. I know those pigs. Vietnamese pot-bellied oh. pig they, to they keep you company. In our ranch, we have it's called Jaja pig. He's kicked over Rory Bremner. <laughs> oh, He's oh God! Oh, oh, don't you buy oh, no. <laughs> See, I thought, I thought, I thought you were frightened at the bars there, Mike. Might, might have been to remind okay, you of your prison. It doesn't pee on me. All right, <laughs> sweetheart. All right. There's one in our ranch called Raja Pig. There's one. They are, they are like little dogs. They're very clever. Just don't pee on me, baby. I don't know if your house broke. <laughs> hey, isn't it cute, though? He's wonderful. Listen, while you get acquainted uh, with the pig... Uh, All right, don't make those funny... We, we, we have got a bit of an anniversary no, today, because uh, today, <laughs> had he still been alive, Elvis Presley would have been 58 years of age. In fact, uh, on hearing of his death, one Hollywood agent said, what a great career move. And since his death, he's actually become... A bit, well, I suppose a bit of a god, in a way, uh, almost no, a religious a icon. He's a king in America. But to some, pe some people, you know, they, they treat him like so god, don't they? In August 1977, Elvis Presley fell off a Memphis toilet seat and died. But to many devoted followers, the king still lives. If you use your common sense, you'll realize Elvis isn't dead. When you change the letters to Elvis's name around, it, it uh, appears to mean lives. My name is Elvis Aaron Presley. He came to me and he told me that I have to carry on doing what I'm doing. Over the last 15 years, the King has been sighted everywhere, from a Huddersfield cinema to a hospital in Florida. But it was in this bar in Atlanta, one year after the King's supposed death, that the most sensational story unfolded. I was working as a barmaid in a lounge. A person came in. He said that he was a retired musician from Nashville, Tennessee, and that he was here to try to get settled because this is where he had decided to retire. Hi, how are you today? Can I get you something to drink? It evolved into a relationship, and we had a love affair, and then we moved in together. And he said, well, I'm going to set you down and I'm going to tell you something that is going to change your entire life. And he says, I tried to protect you from it. I can't protect you from it. So now I'm going to have to tell you or lose you. And he says, I am Elvis Presley. I did not die. But Elizabeth's no crank. She claims to have shared the King's bed until their split in 1981 and has since passed a series of rigorous lie detector tests. Did you call him Elvis? No. What did you call him? I called him Tony. And that was his pseudonym? Right. And did he ever ask you to call him Elvis? No. No, I was never allowed to call him Elvis. That was only known between me and him. Mm -hmm. And did he look like Elvis? No. He let a full beard grow, long beard, big beard, mm -hmm. you know. And they did a little bit of silicone to keep the lip mm -hmm. from coming up. And what do you think he did between the time that he faked his death and met you? I know for a fact that he was carried up in the mountains of Kentucky, you and that was where he stayed for seven, uh, six to seven months, and they reprogrammed his life. They, I mean, they literally taken him, taught him how to walk, taught him how to talk, taught him everything so that he would not slip up. What were the reasons Elvis gave for faking his death? He wanted to feel like a normal human being again. He wanted to be able to go into a grocery store. And that was one of the biggest kicks I had, was going into a store with him. Did Elvis have any unfulfilled ambitions? 
Elvis wanted more than anything else in this world to be a policeman. Did he? Oh, yes. Oh, that was a fascination that just never ended. Wearing a badge, having that authority, you know, that was, that was the mm. next power surge for him. I'm thinking in terms of, uh, I'd like to do a little more of a serious role, you know? He was a very romantic man, very romantic. But he never could quite get used to just one monogamous relationship. Oh, my goodness, this man had an appetite. He was beautiful with women. He could take you and make you feel like Marilyn Monroe or whoever you wanted to be. He thought the Polaroid camera was the most beautiful thing that had ever been, you know, invented. But, you know, that was private. Now, this story is admittedly fantastic. What do you say to people who think you're certifiably nuts? Well, we're all a little bit insane, I think, at times in our life. But the only thing that I can tell people is that, thank God, we all live in America, and you're allowed to, to believe in anything that you want to believe in. I'm not here to prove to anybody that Elvis is alive. I am here to tell a story, and it happened to me. I lived through it, and I know what happened. I think that his fans have a right to stop going to Graceland and crying over a grave when the man is not there. If they want to prove the man is dead, dig up the grave, let's see it, and let's be done with it. Happy birthday, Elvis, wherever you are. Elvis Presley and uh, I suppose the prophets uh, of his little religion uh, who uh, reckons that she went out with him in 1978. <laughs> I think she's a bit yeah, nuts. What, what the, you know, seduction line did Elvis use on you, Jarsha? Oh, no, nothing. He asked, I was playing in Las Vegas, he was playing, and he sent over if I, he would like to meet me. And I said, well, I thought he was ridiculous until I met him. I had a beautiful secretary. She said, oh, Miss Cabo, let's see Elvis. So we went over to the, he was in the Hilton Hotel. We went over his dressing room and he came in like a big snake. He looked fabulous, beautiful. Not my type. I like your type of sort of blondish, crazy boy. <laughs> I mean, he looks sort of shoe You know what shoe says when you clean your shoes with that wix or whatever you call it? That's how he looked very shiny and very, <laughs> not my time. But he, I could understand that some crazy women like this lady must be mad in love with him. I know, I just made a movie with his ex-wife, Naked Gun Two and a Half, and she left him. Mm. So, so you like the more rough and ready. Listen, okay. we're going like to keep, ready, yeah. we're gonna have to ask you to keep a bit quiet now because uh, Mark's actually Are got the woman ready? on the line uh, now from America. I've got a book of mates of laid odds uh, of evens that Elvis will reappear today on his birthday and we thought the only person he's going to reappear to will be lovely Liz. So we've got her on the time now. On, on the, we've got her on the phone for an Elf Watch update. Hello, Elizabeth. Today is Elvis' 56th birthday. 58th, sorry. Uh, have you heard from him recently? Uh, not since October. Uh, he was uh, in Hawaii at the time, and he was recovering from a heart attack. How is the... Oh, dear. How, how is the king looking these days, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm sure he's like all the rest of us. He's older, but uh, I understand that he's lost a lot of weight, and he is trying to take better care of himself, so... If he is alive, whose body was it in the casket? I'm not sure it was a real body. It was, a, I think, a wax figure because uh, not many caskets have 300-pound air conditioners on them, and I've never seen a corpse sweat. Well, talking of sweating corpses, was he a good lover? Yes, he was a very uh, considerate lover. I, I saw no pervertedness about him. He was very good. Finally, do you have a birthday message for the king if he's watching? Just have a good life and, and stay happy. All right, and you do the same. Bye -bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. But round of applause then for that woman phoning <laughs> all the way from San Mateo. Sir? Sir? Yeah, yeah. So, Jar Jar, Elvis wasn't the only man you turned down. I heard you also turned down oh, Kennedy. Well, well yeah, but, but Kennedy was gorgeous, though. Yeah. Well, I, I'm maybe the only blonde actress in Hollywood who didn't sleep with President Kennedy. And how about Kissinger, you said, and Henry yeah, Fonda? Kiss, well, Kissinger, yes, Fonda. Well, I mean, you want to go through my whole life? Well, what I wanted to ask was. Well, will you, will you sleep with me? I don't know yet. I just want to be turned down so I can be up there with the king, do you know what I mean? Well, not up there, as the case may be. Anyway, coming up in part two, uh, I meet the new Mel Gibson, thank you very much, and Danny talks to the man whose recent uh, concert uh, saw... Sorry, I'm all over the place now with the excitement. Saw the shooting of four people in the arrest of 50. See you later, one. <laughs>
Who recently called the Queen a bag and Diana and Fergie tarts? Was it Camilla Parker Bowles, Joan Rivers, Jackie Stallone, or Judy Finnegan? Find out after the break. Spread the word. If you've tried to give up smoking, you know how difficult it can be. The craving just won't go away. But now the makers of Nicorette gum have developed a nicotine patch that is clinically proven and available without a prescription from your pharmacist. So if you're determined to quit, Nicorette now offers you even more help to beat the craving, leaving you free to give up smoking. Nicorette patch and gum, both available from your pharmacist now. If your indigestion tablets taste chalky and gritty, try Remigel. They're soft, chewy, and minty. Remigel. They're chewy, not chalky. Whopper, please. You got it. Pickle. Oh, you don't like pickle? Well, leave it out. You can't do that. It's your Whopper. Have it your way. Now at Burger King, you can have any flame-grilled burger the way you want it, so you get your burger your way. Yeah, hot double cheeseburger, hot the mustard. Uh, BK chicken flamer, extra tomato. Whopper. Extra lettuce, no meat. Burger King's new way with burgers, your way. No ifs, no buts, in no time. No pickle. You want it your way, at BK, you got it. Uh, toothpaste, razors. Yeah. Milk, coffee, Coke. Tea bag. Tea bag. Four chips, two sandwiches, three, uh, two pasties. Shampoo, toothpaste, deodorant. Newspaper. <laughs> Dog food. <laughs> Crackers. Cat food. Cat food. Four chips. Cakes. Two sandwiches. Steak. Cherry slices. Oh, cherry slices. That's two pasties. Newspapers. Esso has more forecourt shops than anyone else. Cat food. Where you can fill up with whatever you need, mm -hmm. whenever you need it. And, um... No! All you have to do is remember what you wanted. Did you remember the crackers? Call Party Lines on 0898 21 21 21. Probably the most exciting place to chat and make new friends. Just dial 0898 21 21 21. In 1993, Vauxhall brings you style, safety and great Vauxhall value. Drive away a super new Nova Spin for only 88.22 a month, APR 7.8%, with Vauxhall Choice's 123 finance plan. And just arrived for 93, a new special edition Astra Swing, packed full of features including power steering at an on-the-road price of just 8.890. Test drive the great value now on offer at your local Vauxhall dealership. Vauxhall means value in 93. In this continuous test, Duracell outlasts ordinary SP batteries by up to six times. Duracell. No ordinary battery looks like it or lasts like it. Savills Auto Village, the only dealer to reflect the quality of new Vauxhalls with BS. Savills, our quality raises your standards. Now there's a new way to help you give up smoking. The Nicorette Patch, available without a prescription from your pharmacist. If you're determined to quit, it'll help you beat your craving. The word. We asked you who recently called the Queen a bag and Diana and Fergie tarts. The answer is Jackie Stallone. That's like Henry Kelly calling Terry Wogan a boring Irishman. Of the word. Whoa, terrible Andor, welcome back to part two of the word. Now, I always believed in that old Hollywood adage, never wear it with children, they're animals. However, these animals are very special, and that's why I've made an exception. They are, of course, pigs, as you can see. And GCSE English literature students will be very, very familiar with pigs, as they have a starring role in George Orwell's Animal Farm. They also are... Uh, of the main thread, I suppose, of William Golding's Lord of the Flies. In fact, a pig was responsible for the death of a medieval king of England. And what else do you say about pigs? Oh, aye, they're more intelligent than dogs as well. And we'll be finding out what special talents these pigs have a little later on. Meanwhile, we're going straight over to music. This is a band who, have, uh, who are bringing Marian Faithful's song, Broken English, into the 1990s, Sunscreen. <laughs>
Thanks a lot to Sunscreen there. I don't know about you, I'm fed up with reading in the papers those same old stories, boy meets girl, boy loses pig. So Danny's going to check up on one of those stories and see what the facts are. Well, welcome back. I'm here in Reigate, Surrey, with my friend Trotter, who's a Peruvian pygmy pig. And up until yesterday, he was living happily with a loving family in Orpington. But tragedy struck, the family split up, and the partner had to cope with both his children and the pig. One of them had to go, and sadly, it was Trotter. But he's now been staying in a temporary foster home looked after by Christine Coe. Hi, Christine. Hello. What are you feeding him? Um, well, he eats mainly in, um, pig nuts. But he also likes to eat green vegetables and root vegetables, and he did like bread and buns as well. That's not very expensive, is it? Uh, no, it's not very expensive at all, really. He really doesn't cost a lot more than uh, average family dog to feed. And you're used to looking after cats and dogs. Have you ever looked after anything as unusual as Trotter before? Uh, well, we've, we have actually looked after one pig before. He was a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. Uh, his name was Percy, and he was great fun. <laughs> well, also with us tonight, we have Tim Wass from the um, Paris PCA. Hi, Tim. Hi. What condition Hi. was he in when you found him? Well, quite unsuitable, really. He was in a two-bedroom semi-detached house in Orpington. The back garden had been paved over towards the house, and uh, there was a kennel on it with his name above it. Well, for a pygmy pig, it's, I wouldn't say it's rather small, would you? <laughs> no, and I think that's the problem. <laughs> uh, I don't have a word with the, the trade description people. When they got him, um, he was advertised as a pygmy pig. Um, in fact, he is, but by their standards, not ours. And is he in good health, would you say? Excellent, with the exception of uh, a problem with his back leg where he, he slipped on some ice recently. He's, uh, he's doing fine, he's great. And what kind of a home are you going to be looking for and is it easy to live with? It won't be particularly easy to live with um, and the home, of course, is, is the big problem. He's going to need some rather special uh, treatment in that he doesn't think he's a pig, he thinks he's a human being. <laughs> and um, well, as We've got such, news for you. <laughs> that's right. As such, we can't stick him in a field with other pigs. Um, he just won't take to them at all. We need somebody who's got lots of time to devote to him. The facilities have got to be right. 
right, and uh, that's hopefully where you're coming for us. Well, I hope so too. I hope our word viewers out there are going to help find Trotter a new safe sty to live in. And by doing that, you can call our swine line on 0891 333367. Calls are 48p a minute or 36p cheap rate. And please don't waste your money unless you really think that you've got a suitable home for Trotter to live in. And remember, a pig's not just for Christmas, it's little ones for life. As far as I'm concerned, a pig's not just for Christmas, it's for breakfast. But anyway, <laughs> you seem very fond of pigs. Lucky you're on tonight, because you've been stroking that one for ages. Is that He's like, very much petrified of all you people who made such a noise. That pig is not accustomed to so many crazy people. No, I'm not either, to be honest. Poor but darling, nice sleeping. He was petrified about the big music when time. Don't call people crazy. You're nearest to him. But anyway, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> last, year's, uh, last year's big Australian smash was a lovely little love film called Strictly Ballroom. And this year's film which was a massive hit, Romper Stomper, has also got a few lovely little moments. My Kev. This book was written by Adolf Hitler. It turned into a joke by a lot of people who don't want to know Hitler's view of the world. It's simply about the ongoing struggle of the white race and the enemies it faces. If you don't know who the enemy is, you can't win the war. Listen. They were compromised by the seed of lesser races. They were attracted to the works of the superior men. The undeniable reason for their decline was then due to a kind of racial blood poisoning. Racial blood must then be preserved in its purity. <laughs> Keep that applause going. Keep it going for the man who starred in that film. Thank you very much for going, Russell Crowe. Thank you. Thanks. It's a, it was a stunning film. I watched it this morning. It's very moving and very the light. It's quite hard to watch. Sorry? Careful. You lost it. I took the colour okay. of the pig because he didn't like it. Uh -huh. Oh, right. You'd know. How would you know? Sorry, I didn't mean that in a nasty <laughs> way. <laughs> I just meant how would you know? But anyway, I don't want to get into that. Um, as I was saying about the film, Russell, do you mm -hmm. want to tell us a little bit about it? Because obviously no one else has seen it yet over here. Uh, well, it's, a, it's a, basically a love story, believe it or not. Uh, it's about putting love in a very difficult situation. However, it, it puts a spotlight on a number of uh, great social problems, such as uh, racism and uh, the rise of national socialism and the uh, Nazi philosophies. And is that like quite big in Australia at the moment? Um, no, it's, you know, you'd be you'd be hard pressed to even fill a whole cinema if you got them all together <laughs> at the one time, you know. But um, and then petrol bombing. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea, yeah, actually. <laughs> um, no, it's more more to do with. Um, the fact that, that we're discussing racism and putting it onto the, onto the table for, for public consumption and using what is really a, you know, a great cinematic uh, character, you know. But how did, how did you, if there, if there aren't like neo-Nazis on the rise in Australia, how did you get into that character? How did you know what to look out for? Because I was in Europe when I got the gig, actually. Oh, right. So uh, so, well, you, weren't you in Wales? I read a story that you were in a pub in Wales and you yeah, discovered yeah. the Welsh neo-Nazi on his own, <laughs> getting well, good kicking. I was actually it. in Wales researching another film called uh, Love in Limbo where I play an only retentive Welsh Baptist virgin by the name of Arthur Baskin. Sounds and, good. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I bumped into this guy, he started talking to me because of, of my accent and uh, essentially he started off the conversation, you know, about there's an appointment in the Commonwealth that's broken up. Well, wasn't it beautiful? We were all together as brothers. Everybody in the Commonwealth. But I don't like Canadians. But everybody else, I, I don't like New Zealanders. But everybody in the corner. Uh, <laughs> what part of Australia do you come from? <laughs> it was sort of peering down. It was just going to be him left, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't like the people upstairs. I just, it's just me. Is what? No, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. They, we've had a lot of trouble with voices tonight, basically. People coming from all over the world and gathering around a pig. You always get that problem. But um, you, you've been compared <laughs> with Mel Gibson, as most Australian actors have. Yeah, well, I'm actually a member of uh, the new Mel Gibson club. There's about uh, 10 of us in, in Australia at the moment. Hugo Weaving, Ben Mendelsohn, and a Aidan Young, and a lot of other people. And we've actually, um, you, to, to join the club, you've got to have a printed article saying somebody calling you the new Mel Gibson. We've actually sent Mel a letter uh -huh. asking us to be our patron, but he hasn't replied yet. Well, he could start um, like the old Mel Gibson club. Just have it on his own. I think he's already got that, isn't he? Write letters to himself and stuff. You've just been to Hollywood, which obviously this woman's the icon of. What did, how did you feel but about it? I don't know what icon means, but I was in Australia. It's a common use English word. Don't start picking on people all the time, Jar Jar. <laughs> but I'm Hungarian. But I was in Australia and I adore Australia. It's be, I was in Sydney twice already and in Melbourne. You don't get people like him in Australia, do you? No, but I. Yeah, well, never that rude. What's your rude? I, I don't understand what oh, I said. thought saying. she was calling you rude before, so no, I was no, just trying no, to rude you. I don't understand what you know? he said. <laughs> I was just trying to stick her tongue down my throat in the interval, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. We're, talk we're talking about something else. Talking of, of Hollywood, which is exactly where you're from, uh, this man's recent concerts caused four shootings, didn't cause, saw four shootings and 50 arrests. Danny Bear has gone to LA to meet one of rap's most controversial stars, Ice Cube. <laughs> in the black part of the city. Yo, G, yo, G. This is South Central Los Angeles, where the riots took place last year. The man I'm here to meet is one of the most influential and successful rappers in America. To some, he's a spokesman for a generation. To others, he's the unacceptable face of black radicalism. He's cool, but he ain't square. He's Ice Cube. Cube's latest album, Predator, was the first hardcore rap album to go straight to number one in the US charts. And he's also starred in hard-hitting movies like Boys in the Hood. He's an ex-member of Niggas with Attitude, whose records and videos were banned for allegedly inciting urban violence. At his recent Boxing Day concert in Seattle, he is said to have provoked rival gang members into a bloody confrontation, leaving four people hospitalized with gun wounds and 50 people arrested. This guy got shot in the head. They were fighting it before it even, you know, started. Ice Cube predicted inner city unrest on his previous two albums and controversially condoned last year's Los Angeles riots. You know, I just kicked it and watched it and, uh, you know, my mother had told me about the riots in 65 and what went on and uh, now that I see that it happened, you know, you know, to be honest, I was kind of happy that it happened because, you know, I think we made a, a big point, you know, and um, I loved every minute of it. Sitting by the window because it's so fucking hot and then I heard a shot. Boom. I was scared that this guy was under PCP. The riot started the after the controversial acquittal of the four policemen who were accused of beating manner, Rodney King. The eyes can see the truth, you know, and, and the verdict was just showing that, uh, Putting your you know, really where this country's agenda is, and it's time to and just, the it's just a wake-up call. My agenda is to tell the truth and to get black people to love ourselves so we can respect ourselves so we can work together and build something. Rodney well, whilst King Cube's attempts at supporting yeah. on the Rodney King case face censorship, one of the four officers involved seems set to earn a packet from his account when his book, Presumed Guilty, is released. What I really want is I want the story to come out. Mm -hmm. Now, to get the story to come out, you have to sell a lot of books. Mm -hmm. And as a result of selling a lot of books, you're going to make a lot of money. I'm out to get rich, life ain't but money Cube's I massive following has ensured that he already has a lot of money, despite constant media accusations of anti-Semitism and racism. Yeah. It's easy for them to tag on all these names, but uh, black people have been the victim of racism. So, you know, <laughs> how we, we, if any of us racist, we, we uh, have a right to be. Cube's new film, Trespass, was originally called Looters, but had to be renamed and recut when Cube and co-star Ice-T came out in support of the looting during the L.A. riots. This situation does have an explanation. <laughs> At 24, he probably holds more sway with young people in the U.S. than Clinton. But Cube's convinced that music is a far more powerful weapon than politics. That music really is the only way, only medium that we have to express our point of view, you know, frankly, you know, without, without biting our tongue, without, you know, worrying about censors. When Ice Cube had more amps, get in, G. You know, I just put it out there. You know, I don't make up these feelings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm made in America. Sasha, Sasha, we're back on there. Can you come sit down? No, but I just think, you see, I am an actress. I just. <laughs> She's not bothered by all this history, like TV. Let me talk to you for one second. Yeah. All these women in the audience, including you and man, you all slept with people, but you only talked to, to me about who am I slept with. What about my 58 movies and all the television shows on Broadway? You only talk about <laughs> that. I can answer that. I can answer that. So stupid. Jaja. I would like no, to see I'll one lady in this audience who didn't sleep this man. If you should show me one English girl Well, there's probably some, to be honest. Very, very few. few. Did you ever sleep with Eddie Albert? No, that's my sister. Uh, oh, in was it? No, no, no. Oh, stinking move there. Stinking move. No, no, no. Green Acres was a very big television series in America. My sister played with Eddie Albert. Yeah. But I know every English woman. But answer lovers. the question, Zaza. Don't try and get away I from never it. Did you ever sleep with Why should I sleep with Eddie Albert? I didn't ask you anything about sleeping didn't. with anyone. I just said, come and sit down. No, but You've got sex on the brain, <laughs> woman. All your, all I said, come and sit down, and you started going, oh, shag this, shag that. I've done loads of films as well. 
because all your question of your partner was, who did you Well, I was actually with? just about to ask you about the LA riots, because you live in LA. Surely yes, that had a big effect terrible. on it. it was terrible. It was terrible. You were probably shagging someone at the time. I wouldn't even imagine. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> did did, did it have an effect on you? Did they, who did you did, sleep out the thing with No, that? did the LA, uh, LA riots have it any effect on you? The question was, Mark, who were you sleeping with during the LA riots? Exactly. Who was I sleeping? Uh, many people as I could, but who, what I, effect did I, it have I, on you? I was the first person of the Beverly Hills police beat up. The first, and now they self. So you're saying Rodney King was a copycat arrest? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, obviously. They have T-shirts now. Jaja was right. No, Rodney King was the most unfair thing that happened. The riots. I understand why rights were. The rights were because they didn't give any rights to the black people, and they have rights in America. And just because Rodney King was a black man, it was no reason to beat him up like that. And I'm on Rodney King's side, so you're asking the wrong yeah. person. I think, I think we're out of the <laughs> Anyway, it's time now to go from that, a little bit of uh, American culture, to a bit of English, no culture at all. Let's go and see what Terry's doing with the pigs. Ooh. Culture. Culture, what's that? Listen, up there in the northeast of England, they're well known for, the, for liking their sport and a little bit of a flutter on the horses and everything. Particularly in the village of Bellingham, which is up there in the northeast of the country, not far from Newcastle. And there, the uh, sport that they all put a bit of money on is pig racing. So uh, before we go any further, let's have a look at some of the pigs in Bellingham in action. Oops. Right. Now, unfortunately. Oh, right, listen, I'm going mad. Yes, unfortunately, last year's champion, Pig Racer, obviously wasn't fast enough because uh, all the uh, thoroughbred racing pigs were slaughtered. And uh, this apparently is the ex-champion, Lester Piglet, as he was known. So tonight, in memoriam of poor old Lester Piglet, we are going to take, well, have the commemorative Lester Piglet handicap. And uh, the pigs have been supplied here by uh, Trevor Smith from uh, Animal World. Now... Have these pigs been on TV before? Yeah, they've done lots of mad things, and TVs, documentaries, pop promos. A bit unpredictable, they tend to crap everywhere, so you have to watch them all the time. <laughs> Is it not a bit cruel, because they are more intelligent than no, dogs, pigs? No, you can see they're just having a fun time. It's, it's better than being kept in a style all the time, and they really look forward to coming out. This one here's raring to go. I mean, he's, he'll be out in a minute. Uh, having seen them, you know, I couldn't possibly eat bacon or anything like that again. As long as I live, I don't think. Uh, listen, uh, to give us a lowdown, anyway, on our uh, special Lester Piglet, <laughs> Lester Piglet handicap race, we've got Channel 4 racing pundit John McCrurick. Right, John, uh, what, do you, what do you think of the uh, pig, you know, pig racing as well, compared to horse racing? I've certainly raced with pigs, but they beat me, you see. I can tell you, pigs can fly, you know, there's certainty about that. <laughs> Now, uh, wh wh what do you think you've got to watch for if you're studying the form on these pigs? Well, the difference between pig racing and horse racing is, of course, they've got the snouts and it's rather difficult for the photo finish. And the trouble is that the punters get very irate at losing pigs and they shout at them, pork chop and apple sauce and two rashes of bacon. Of course, they get very discouraged with this. So, because they're trying for their lives because of that. Mm. Do they eat the horses, sir? Well, the, you know that race, well, no, 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 no it's, well, it's not quite as bad as that, certainly. But the, 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 of all the bizarre races I've seen, seeing you with those two birds chatting them up, the way they raced away from him, trying to get away from his lascivious clutches, that was the most bizarre race I've ever seen. I know, that's because that's I've given up sex for religious reasons. God made me ugly. Listen, uh, for anyone at home who wants to have a bit of a flutter now on these pigs, take, yeah. take us through uh, the form on them. Let's go and see him. In trap one is Nestor Piglet the second. He looks a bit lean, put, getting on a bit, but he should be able to retire, I should reckon, but he's a six to four favourite, a prolific winner. In number two, Swilly Carson, bottle two to one against him, he's Scotland's proud porker. In three, Walter Swineburn, absolutely unbelievable, it gets worse, I can tell you, he's come over from Ireland, seven to two, carpet and half Walter Swineburn. Now, the enigmatic pig is number four, that's Mr Teats, but they say it's a transvestite. This, there's this pig here, and they've been shrieking stream Miss Piggy in it at it in the um, pigsty. Great squealing going on for Mr. Teats. And this one that cannot win. Look at it. Looks as fat as a pig, this creature here. Sir Gruntwell, it's a 40 to 1 chance. It cannot win. It's so fat. But we're going to soon see if these pigs act like pigs. OK. Listen, I've, I've worked with the pigs before. And by the way, they couldn't tell the difference between him and a pig. Hey, listen, what, what's wrong with everyone tonight? I'll get some <laughs> right to Listen, we'll see uh, that pig race later on, the grand finale. And uh, meanwhile, it's uh, time for a little break. See you later. The word. Who said about Danny Minogue? She looked as if someone had set fire to her face. Was it 
Kylie Minogue, Mark Owen, Melissa Bell, or Bobby Gillespie. Find out after the break. After most meals and snacks, plaque pH can fall to levels where acid starts attacking teeth. These attacks can last for up to two hours, increasing the risk of tooth decay. That's when chewing can help. Because when you chew for 20 minutes after eating, the chewing action produces more of your mouth's natural defense, saliva, which helps neutralize acid within minutes. So chew Orbit or Wrigley's Extra as part of your dental routine, because chewing helps nature fight the acid attack. Chaplin is a remarkable film, said Barry Norman. Charlie! A towering performance, said The Sun. Is this what you want? From director Richard Attenborough, Chaplin. I used to put off going to the dentist. I hated that scraping. So I tried Crest Tartar Control, and it really works. Brushing with Crest Tartar Control helps reduce and can even prevent tartar forming, which means less scraping. The next visit was much better. Thank goodness for Crest. Crest Tartar Control helps stop tartar before it starts. You have a good time, just call friends. You really have a good time and make new friends. Oh, wait, nine, eight, 23, 23, 23. Here we go on the Spar Grand Prix. Hiya, baby. Well, hello. Love your wheels. Of course, mine are turbo. Ooh. Wow, check out that price. Dad will just love these. And let's not forget the ice cream for me. I need some cheese and yogurt and some of those little Spar biscuit thingies I like right down there. Hey, man, I like them too. Do you mind? We're doing some serious shopping here. Ooh. Some of these and some of... Oh, Mum, come on. Everybody knows what I'm doing, these mother. Girls, if you try this stuff, you'll love it. Okay, guys, I got a split. Same time, same place. Same spar? The rusks are on me. I don't know how I'll ever get it off. Fondue. On our anniversary. It's ruined. Take away spring roll, but you can't take it away. Yes, you can, because unlike conventional liquids, new Purcell Micro dissolves fatty stains like greased lightning. This is where Jerry Hall splashed me with gravy. New Purcell Micro liquid makes fatty marks a thing of the past. I know you can't see it now. We asked you, who said about Danny Minogue? She looks as if someone has set fire to her face. And the answer is, Bobby Gillespie. Oh, what a nice boy. The bird. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you very much. What a lovely audience you are. Welcome back. I've still got with me Princess Jar Jar Gabor and Russell Crowe. But first of all, let's have a bit of gossip. The following information on star-sensitive stories is for operational use only. A new series of the cult show Northern Exposure has just started, but you won't be seeing this episode for about a year. Worth waiting for, though, because look who the guest star is. It's Prince Charming himself, Adam Ant. How's it going? Adam must have a good memory, because he's playing a pop star, and he's surprisingly convincing. Accent. Here, crank it up. Core blimey, governor. <laughs> we all love big, blonde, and beautiful Greg Benson as Matt in Home and Away. Why? But look, who's the dark, sultry, and steamy hunk in this Australian Levi ad? Well, it's Greg Benson. 
Greg drops his jeans, but we never find out if he's a natural blonde. <laughs> Distant cousins. Jack Nicholson and Mavis Nicholson. <laughs> Celebrity swear. This week, a celebrity swear with a difference. Countdown contestants were asked to make a word from these letters. They both came up with the same solution. Now then, Gino. Seven. Seven again, and Lawrence. Seven. Seven. Let's say Lawrence is seven, please. I'm not sure if I dare say this one. Wankers. Wankers. Well, it certainly it is said by many people. There's no question about it. Wankers. It'd be interesting to see if that's got in the dictionary. Gino. There's a pair of wankers. A pair of wankers. Sorry, sorry. I anticipated my next line. What is Richard Whiteley doing asking for a definition? <laughs> Mille points. As this was never a transmission. Dear mate, have you ever committed one of those indiscretions live on anything before, Russell? A uh, number of times, yeah, but, you know, sort of vague come out and you just... What's the most the embarrassing one? Um... I think on uh, a show called the Steve Weisard show in Australia, where I... Which is I, the, the big chat show. Yeah, show. yeah, and I was talking about, you know, this, this first gig I'd done. He wanted to know, like, the, the first thing I could remember as a, like, an actor. And I was talking about this thing when I was a young kid playing this guy who got bashed up in the back of a taxi by his older brother, you know. And I called him a prick, but you can probably use that word on oh, the Oh, yeah, show. no, that's fine. <laughs> well, no, we don't even bother with that it. one. <laughs> about you, uh, you, any indiscretions? On telly, I don't mean any, uh, anything else. I don't else. mean indiscretions. Have you sworn on TV? I always, as a mother, I changed one of the biggest television shows in America. I swore so badly that they have to, it was live and they had to change it to tape. Oh. Yeah. Dear me. I always, in the middle of I, live broadcast, I always they say God, it to I always say goddamn. No, they don't. They oh, don't no, have goddamn. We, we more than get away with that. Anyway, less of indiscretions and let's go and see what so Terry's rude, port movements are. I don't understand him, though. Uh, it's, uh, it's all happening here. We're a very sporting show, as you know, and here tonight it's the Leicester Piglet Memorial Handicap. The uh, pig race to end all pig races. And to take us through the form once again, a quick recap. Well, are and we to... counting you as a non-runner for a start? You're also got your snout in the trough, listen, you listen, see. So listen, we're I, I was a non-runner from the day I was born, take my word, right, right, especially right. this week. Right. Now, look, I'm going to get a few tips off you for yep, uh, the racing yep. tomorrow. But first of all, tonight, any punters at home who, uh, you know, who do you fancy to win well, this one? Well, let's have a look at number one, Lester Piglet the second. He's been applying for his old age track to pass, <laughs> but he's six to four favourite still. <laughs> Swilly Carson in two. The word of about him is that he's been a bit drunk and a bit drinking recently, so we're worried about him. Walter Swineburn in three. Bit of a cannibal he is, gobbling a bacon sarnie this morning, so the other pigs don't like him. Mr. Teets in four. In season, they're saying. <laughs> Meant to be a man. Could be up to anything, Mr. Teets. And Sir Gruntwell, always complaining, of course, Sir Gruntwell. But look at these obstacles here. We have an entry. We've got Beecher's Valentine's, the chair. What about these obstacles for these pigs? Mm, aren't they a bit cruel? Well, no, of course they're not cruel. What's right? You're all soft, you are. Yeah, for say. Right, if, listen, they, if, they, if they had Princess Anne on the back, it'd be a bit cruel. Wouldn't well, it? yeah, she's on the back of you, too. It'd be cruel <laughs> for her. But let's have them now under farmer's orders. And they're running. And they're running in the Lesser Pickler State. And it's three just. It's Walter Swineburne has got an early lead. But he won't jump the fence. Walter Swineburne is the early leader. And coming up is four. It's Mr. Teeth. And the crowd are roaring them on. And it's over. It's Walter Swineburne going very strongly. And look at the two. Here is Swilly Carson. Swilly Carson they're coming up to the line. Walter Swineburne. Swilly Carson on the first half. It's Walter Swineburne wins. Walter Swineburne wins from Willy Carson. In third is Mr. Teeth. A very disappointing there. And Lester Bill, Lester Bigger ran very disappointingly. But Walter Swineburne wins. He wins the Lester Bigger Memorial Trophy. They will get the silken purse. What a porker! Walter Swinburne! Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, what, well, what a, what a marvellously competitive race. Couldn't you see they just bolted out, didn't they? To present the uh, prize, of course, we have the Queen of Hollywood, Princess Zaza Zar Zar Gabor. I nearly said Zaza again. I know, yeah, but you don't learn. I know. <laughs> now, here's the uh, oh, winner. Oh, sweet. Now, wait a sec. That is his feed. Good boy. And that is, let me put that on him. And he actually gets a year's supply of swill free and that lovely, <laughs> oh, genuine. Yeah, look how nice. Felt you're, you're not going to kill it. Salatine rosette. Oh, no, don't no, do it. No, that's silly. I want to ask you am I too young to be your toy boy? 
toy boy. Am I too young to be your toy boy? You see, he's not a typical English man here. He was the runt of the litter, you see, he was. So you see, I'm saying, am I coming to your toy boy? Listen, I pull it off, and that's what I want. Just like uh, the swine, who's with Danny now. Makes a change from the usual male chauvinist pigs. Right, Gay, I've just been told our word viewers are jamming up that switchboard for offers to get Trotter here a new safe style to live in. Keep calling us swine line on 0891 333367, and you can use the same line and number any comments on this week's show for Access All Areas, which will be returning on Thursday at 6 p.m. All calls about Trotter will go through to Tim at the RSPCA, who will be following them up, won't you, Gordon? Absolutely. We want to make sure that this time around Trotter gets a proper home. And is this a common problem with large animals? It is. All we ask is that people think about the problems before they take them on. And Kristen, who's been looking after Trotter for the day, are you going to be sorry to see him go? Oh, we'll be sad to say goodbye, but it would lovely, be lovely to see him in a new home with a family that all love him. Well, that's all from us here at Rygate. Back to that swine line studio. Oh, well, that was a bit nasty. <laughs> have you ever worked, swine have you ever worked with animals or the cast of Neighbours? Um, <laughs> <laughs> both, as a matter of fact, yeah. Um, I, did, I did four episodes of Neighbours in 1987 when I was, uh, I was doing the Rocky Horror Show, but I, I said no to it originally when they asked me, but they explained to me in the last scene I'd have Kylie Minogue on my back, Jason Donovan splitting up, and I get to punch Craig McLaughlin. No, well worth it then. Job description. Well that worth one. a job for a good punch in a bold Henry. Anyway, that's enough from me, and thank you very much for joining us, Russell, and goodbye, Jar Jar. Goodbye. goodbye. darling. Uh, did you enjoy the show, then, Jar Jar, tonight? I, I like you better than me. You are a little bit more polite. Not the baby, because I don't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, I'll be coming to Hollywood for me tea, round at your house. I want you to marry my daughter. <laughs> you can't ask me that, can you? you don't marry Thank him. you very much I for coming on tonight. Married. What a terrible time that will Thank will you very for much him. for coming on. Thank you, Al. Yeah. To, what about a tip for the racing tomorrow? Oh, leotard and the two o'clock at Sandown. Big price, might run a big race. Leotard. I'd like to see you in a leotard, Zaza. I'll have a few bob on that. That's all for tonight. We'll see you next week when we've got Jean-Paul Gaultier and music from uh, Belly and Jimmy Reed. Finish tonight with Bizarre Incorporated from up there in Stafford. Took my love. See you next week. And the word is out next Saturday at the later time of ten past two. And don't miss this week's trip behind the scenes. Access all areas Thursday at six. Peter O'Toole directs it all his own way in The Stuntman, tomorrow at 10, on 4. It's a good film, that. Peter O'Toole at his best. Anyway, that's a few hours away yet, and between now and then there's plenty of live football to look forward to on Channel 4, Italian and American varieties. But for now, on behalf of the small but perfectly formed late shift here, I'll wish you a peaceful night. <laughs>